Depending on where you're from, different words may come to mind when you see this. Functional, frustrating, soothing, stressful. For Kevin, it's a work of art. It's the Britain's first roundabout, 1909, and it looks beautiful, does it not? Kevin loves roundabouts so much that he started a kind of group about them. I'm the president of the UK Roundabout Appreciation Society, also known as Lord of the Rings. That's my official title. OK, so yeah, it's a bunch of guys who meet in a pub once every two months to talk about roundabouts. But they are on a mission to save the world. This is where it all started. This wonderful piece of round architecture that makes the traffic filter safely with, with less emissions. Yeah. And that can play its part, if you like, on saving the planet. And the science backs him up. So why aren't more places embracing them? It's got right. Let's right. go. It all started as a bit of a joke with this. 2003, we thought we'd do a Canada roundabouts of Redditch. It sold 20,000 copies. And it was after that that I started thinking, well, hang on, they're quite interesting. And I, it became my hub hobby then, roundabout spotting. Kevin went from spotting roundabouts of Redditch to roundabouts of the UK. And a few years ago, he went global with the International Roundabout of the Year. And I get roundabout enthusiasts now from all around the world sending me pictures of their favourite one-way gyratory. But there's one country Kevin expects more from. Wake up, America. Wake up. Yes, the country with over 300 million cars on the road ranks pretty low in roundabouts compared with some European countries. But that is slowly changing. I read an article that Carmel was actually one town in America that, that loves to embrace the roundabout. So I got in touch with the mayor there. This guy. A number of years ago, I received an email one morning from a United Kingdom Society of Roundabout Appreciation. So I called him. I heard noise. And I said, are you, do you meet in a pub? He said, where else would we meet? <laughs> I said, look, we'd like to make one of your roundabouts, the International Roundabouts of the Year. And, and the response he got was, holy Toledo, we've got to go for this, he said. Yeah? Jim Brainerd is one of the US's longest serving mayors. Under his watch, the city transformed nearly all of its traffic light intersections into roundabouts. We have more roundabouts in Carmel, Indiana than any other city in North America. As a result, our traffic fatality rate is one-sixth that of our national average. Brainerd sold the idea of roundabouts to the city of Carmel on their safety aspect, but they discovered a bonus that came along with it. We found out that roundabouts move 50% more traffic per hour than a traffic light, resulting in tremendous amounts of fuel savings. The city's engineers estimated that each roundabout saved about 20,000 gallons of fuel a year, which they calculate to be 25,500 metric tons of CO2, which would have otherwise gone up into the atmosphere. Let me explain how this works. In a roundabout, cars might have to move slightly further distances, but there's one thing you don't see a lot of, stopping. That matters because... The highest emission factor are during acceleration. So anytime you have stop and go operation, it's an acceleration deceleration cycle. These on a per second basis emit the highest amount of pollutants. At peak hour, congestion at roundabouts can actually get worse than at traffic lights but off-peak, cars are less likely to stop. Acceleration, deceleration drops, and so do the emissions. Some case studies found that replacing a traffic light intersection with a roundabout reduced emissions of four major pollutants by up to 45%. But this can differ depending on time and location. Instead of just solar panels or electric cars, we need to look at every function of city government and see how we can put out fewer emissions. There are now more than 10,000 roundabouts across the country, with states like Wisconsin, Florida, and Maryland embracing them more than others. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation has more roundabouts on their system than any other state. Public perception has definitely gotten better over time, but change is hard. 
In the spirit of change, I asked my American colleague Albert, who got his license this year, to try out his first roundabout on our drive up to see Kevin. All right. So do you know what this Whoa. Is? Okay, what do I, uh, what do I do here? Yeah, so Wait. let this guy go. A relatively peaceful drive through the English countryside quickly descended into chaos. Wait, what do I do here? <laughs> Just okay, keep going, keep going. Yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, okay, you, what? Okay, 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 okay. But we survived. Uh, so that's a, that's a roundabout. <laughs> Jesus. And even though Albert okay. wasn't immediately won over. Roundabouts, I, I don't get him. Kevin reckons it's only a matter of time before the world sees roundabouts the way he does. They lift our sagging spirits on long, tiresome journeys with their infinite variety of colour and inventiveness. Robert Louis Stevenson once said, there's nowhere in the world that exerts such attractive power as an island. I reckon he was talking about traffic islands. They're all treasure islands to me, anyhow. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe so we can show you more.